In this short video, we'll take a look at how kinetic switches work. Many people have asked how kinetic switches can function when there are no wires between two-way switches. Why do we not need a neutral? And how could I extend a lighting circuit with kinetic switches and a myriad of other questions? This video will take a general look at how they work in block form. A look at how they do what they do. A follow-on video will look at the specifics of various types of switch and modifying different types of circuit. Kinetic energy is a scientific term. Without getting too complicated, it tells us that if an object moves, it has a certain energy, and this energy can be transferred or used by other items. Physics also tells us that energy cannot be destroyed. It must go somewhere. It must be passed on or converted into something else. As a very basic example, think of a hammer and a nail and what happens when the kinetic energy is transferred between them. There is the movement energy of the hammer blow as it strikes the nail. The hammer stops and transfers the energy to the nail. And the nail then moves and penetrates the piece of wood. This is keeping things very simple. And in this video, we will show you how we can use kinetic energy to generate an electrical signal to turn the lights on and off. The drawings that we use are just representative diagrams. The important thing is to get the message across. What happens in the switch? What are the stages in making the lamp operate? Start with a switch. A finger press and release causes movement inside the switch assembly. An internal mechanism inside the switch will harness the energy of the switch movement operation. Kinetic energy is produced by the finger pressing and releasing the switch. The energy used by your finger pressing that switch is converted to mechanical movement inside the switch and this energy is then converted into electrical energy. A signal is created by this electrical energy and the transmitter module sends this high-frequency coded signal through the airwaves to the receiver, which might be on the other side of the room. We cannot hear this signal. It's in the order of 400 megahertz or more. At the receiver switch, the receiver module accepts the signal and causes a relay module to flip between on or off. Each time it receives a signal, it will change the lamp to the opposite state. On, off, on, off and so on. We call this toggling or flip-flopping. Let's begin by looking at some common examples of a physical movement creating an electrical current. We should all be familiar with a record player and they are actually coming back into popularity again. There are some very fine coils of wire inside the pickup head and these are arranged around a very small magnet that is attached to the pickup needle. The needle follows the patterns in the record groove and the magnet moves to follow the groove pattern. The lumps and bumps of the record groove will give us the high fidelity music that we desire. How? The needle moves in response to the internal shapes of the groove. The lumps and bumps cause mechanical movement of the magnet. As the magnet moves up and down, side to side, in between the coils, an electrical current will flow they will mimic the frequency of the groove indentations. Bigger changes and more rapid changes in the groove shape will cause a greater current at a higher frequency to flow in the coils. The record player will amplify this very tiny signal to reproduce the music and hey presto, we have the movement of the needle converted into sound. Another example is an on-site generator. The coils are fixed in position, stationary. Hence, they are called the stator. When the petrol engine is fired up, the magnetic rotor between the coils will begin to rotate, and this is why it's called the rotor. The movement or rotation of the rotor is converted into electrical current in the fixed stationary coils. Now we can produce much more current than the record player needle, with 110 volts, 230 volts and 400 volts at several amps being typical. And we can scale this up to power stations 
such as the Drax power station in North Yorkshire. At its heyday, it could produce 2.5 megawatts of electrical power. Movement in, electrical current out. A piezoelectric gas lighter is another, but much different, example of movement creating electricity. The energy from moving the finger will move a mechanism inside the lighter that distorts a crystal. As the crystal is put under pressure and released, it will suddenly output a voltage, a spark, that will ignite the gas. And some budget record players use this method of sound reproduction. As the pickup needle follows the groove, a tiny crystal inside the head is moved and distorted to produce a tiny electrical current that the record player can amplify into music. Not high fidelity, but it works. Looking now at kinetic switches, how are they going to work? We should start with the receiver unit, which may or may not include a switch as well. As these are light switches in this example, it will make sense to talk about a combined receiver and switch accessory. This is the bit that has the 230 volt switch wires going to it. We don't need a neutral, just connect the incoming and outgoing switch wires into the back of the switch. We are not using these wires to power the switch. The switch part of the accessory will produce its own electricity to operate a relay device that will operate the switch. The receiver switch unit will often need a 25mm back box. The way the switch works cannot be squeezed into a standard 15mm back box for lights. The receiver unit or receiver and switch are the only accessories that have 230 volt electricity fed to them. The transmitter switches do not contain 230 volts. For two-way and intermediate switching, no longer do we need to run strapper cables between switches. The first switch has the 230 volt switch wires fed into it and that is where the need for 230 volts stops. The second switch is completely independent and can be located anywhere as it has no 230 volts and needs no wires. The transmitter switches are usually rated at IP44 or better, even IP67, so can be installed in bathroom locations and are available also with no screw holes on the front, so they can even be glued onto tiled wall surfaces without the need to drill through tiles. The transmitter switch will generate a coded signal when pressed and released that sends a high frequency coded signal into the surrounding air. If the receiver unit is within range and if the coded signal matches that expected by the receiver, then the receiver switch will toggle or flip-flop the relay device. On lights go off or off lights come on. Intermediate or three-way switching is now so easy. Again, no wires between switches. In fact, four, even five separate transmitter switches can be linked to one receiver switch. The linking process is simple and takes only a few seconds for each appliance. As with any hardwired installation, pressing any switch will change the on and off states of the lights. In our domestic light example here, only the first switch needs to have the switch wires going to it. A very simple representation of how we can convert the action of pressing a light switch into an electrical signal might go as follows. Imagine a magnetic wheel inside the kinetic switch assembly. If the lever is moved, the wheel will move. North at the top will become north at the bottom and south at the top. If we can spin the wheel fast enough for a short time, we will have north-south, north-south, north-south as it rotates. And we can now do something with this. Think of the record player from a few slides ago. If, in our light switch, we can arrange a coil to envelop the magnetic wheel, we can exploit the principles of electricity generation as discovered by Michael Faraday back in the early 1800s. He moved a loop of wire between two magnets. And here, we are moving a magnet between a coil. It's the same idea, movement is the key. A very small voltage will be generated inside the coil 
and this can be put to good use. Starting at the top left and working clockwise, what do we have? The transmitter switch, perhaps some distance away, is pressed by the occupant of the building. The voltage would cause an electric current to flow to the transmitter electronics to a microchip inside the switch assembly. The electronic circuitry inside the device will produce a coded signal that is transmitted into the air. This signal, although very weak, can travel a few tens of metres inside a building and maybe a hundred or more metres in clear line of sight, outside perhaps. This coded signal can only be collected by the receiver to which it has been linked. If the codes match, the signal will be processed by the receiver and it will cause the relay assembly inside the accessory to change state from on to off or off to on. Notice that the receiver switch will also have its own switch wheel assembly built into itself. How otherwise would it be able to function as a switch as well? And that is the very basics about kinetic light switches. Hopefully a little more knowledge has been added to your mental toolbox. A video is planned that will look in much more detail at the functioning of these switches and receivers. The types available how they can be used to operate non-lighting loads, how they can be used in special locations to comply with Part P of the building regulations, and more. We hope that you've enjoyed the video, and we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel, get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com and don't forget that you can also type in learn electrics all one word into the youtube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer we are constantly adding new videos to our channel so don't miss the next one and once again thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon